a gentleman by the name of Richard pays us a visit on day 57. A piano player has arrived in the hotel owned by Richard. Truth be told, I do not know who Richard is, nor do I know where this hotel he's referring to is located, but I do appreciate him providing me with this piano lore all the same. The majority of our crops have withered away, which is always a sad sight. However, the Georgia Berry ancient fruit, corn and pearl seeds are still standing. And I am sure there will be a plethora of seeds I can plant in place of the summer crops this season. I harvest some green beans and rhubarb from the garden pots, the important one being rhubarb as this still has to be donated to the community center. I make a beeline for the greenhouse in Grandpa's shed where with a heavy heart I begin removing the entire two rows of seeds at the bottom. I plant five fruit tree saplings in place of these seeds. This is repeated with the top two rows of seeds. I did have a bit of a lackadaisical moment however as I seem to have forgotten my pomegranate tree sapling. That is a travesty of the highest order and must be rectified immediately. I head to Piers where I buy 50 of each fall seed, 550 speed grow and a pomegranate sapling. I buy a further 300 pumpkin seeds, bringing us up to a total of 350 of them. I have also decided to pay more attention to the villagers' birthdays this season. And by that, I mean I will be over the moon if I remember to give gifts to three of them. I do not have high expectations for our friendships this year. I donate the rhubarb I harvested this morning to finally complete the spring crops bundle. I take a look at the remaining crop bundles to once again keep myself humble. I ask Robin to add a shed to the farm, our storage situation is disgusting quite frankly. Dare I even say the overall aesthetic of the farm is not sensational. In fact, I would go a step further and say the current state of the farm is an insult to every Stardew Valley player that has ever lived. Okay, no, it's not that bad, but I'm hoping me saying this will motivate me to tidy it up just a little bit during fall. After purchasing a couple of machines and tree fertilizer from Robin, I return to Grandpa's shed and plant the pomegranate tree. All of our trees should be fully grown on the first day of winter. To finish off the day, I get started on planting all of the seeds I bought today. I am content with how the first day of this brand new season has gone. The planting of seeds continues on day 58. The bad news about being able to buy hundreds of seeds is it takes quite a bit of time to get everything planted. The good news is, once everything is planted, I can pretty much just forget about them and let the sprinklers work away. I think at this point it's safe to say that the undisputed MVP of this playthrough so far is the Iridium Sprinklers. They have very much added a positive vibe to this adventure so far. Also, when it comes to the speed grow, there is absolutely no rhyme or reason when it comes to how and where I sprinkle it. Some crops were blessed with this magical substance, while others were not. I make the executive decision to enter the Skull Caverns for what I believe is the first time. My goal here is not to collect Iridium Ore and Gems, but rather to see how well we can do with the Iridium Pickaxe and the Exaliburn. The answer? Pretty well. The sword easily takes care of any and every monster I encounter, and the pickaxe breaks every rock here rather swiftly. My curiosity has been satiated by the time I reach floor 5, so I end the Skull Cavern gallivanting session there. I think I will save the proper Skull Cavern runs for next year. The beautiful sight of freshly grown artichokes awaits me when I enter Grandpa's shed. I need Gold Star Artichoke for the community center, so this certainly will not be the final artichoke harvesting session of the season. Back on the farm, Lorenzo has decided to pay us a visit. When he was younger, his parents would take him and his siblings to this farm to visit my grandparents. My grandpa helped his family when they were new to Pelican Town, and as a token of his appreciation for this, Lorenzo gives us a couple of gifts. One deluxe speed grow, a plate of spaghetti, 1,000 gold, and a lucky charm that belonged to my grandma. Lorenzo apologizes for taking so long to visit us and tell us all about the shared history between our families. He wanted to make sure we actually are our grandfather's grandchild. Do not fret, Lorenzo. That is a very understandable choice. I spend the rest of the night planting even more seeds. Now that it is fall, I can plant the artichoke seeds on the farm instead of in the greenhouse. That is marvelous news. A short cutscene plays on day 59 where somebody, I assume it is our grandma, appears to us in a dream, I 
think. I'm not entirely sure what any of this was. She tells us that she and her grandfather are very happy we have finally arrived in Pelican Town and are settling in nicely. What a sweet start to the day. It has occurred to me that I have prioritized Doran's Rest above every other expansion mod. That is not something I intended to do, I was actually planning on bouncing back and forth between each one and giving them all plenty of time to shine in this playthrough. Ergo, two things must happen during this season. Number one, I must do everything I can to speed through the remaining quests associated with Durin's Rest. I assume these quests will require a plentiful amount of Dwarven Barley, the seeds for which I shall acquire this morning. Number two, I want to dive into another expansion mod. And I don't mean I just talk to the villagers and walk around East Scarp or Ridside Village, no, I want to begin a new storyline. And start showing what these other mods have to offer. I'm hoping this will spice things up and keep this series entertaining. I make my way to Robin's where I purchase 20 kegs, preserve jars and tappers. Now that my garden pot obsession has been tossed to the side, I can fixate on these three machines instead. I ask Robin to add a third shed to the farm. Inside this shed is where the kegs I obtain will be placed. The special orders board has been added to the town center. I for one cannot wait to accept special orders and then immediately forget about them. I wish I was joking but my brain is a sieve when it comes to actually remembering to do the special orders I accept. I accept a special order from Clint to defeat 50 dust sprites. This is a very easy special order to complete and the reward for completing it is the crafting recipe for the Geode Crusher. Will I actually complete this special order? No, absolutely not. In fact, as soon as I took one step away from the board, I was already thinking about a dozen things, none of which involve going to the mines and defeating the aforementioned dust sprites. Some wheat is ready for harvest in the greenhouse. This is another crop that can be planted on the farm during fall, so the greenhouse is going to be used almost exclusively for fruit tree saplings for the foreseeable future. I say almost exclusively because I do need gold star tomatoes which must be planted in here. Piers is closed which means I must venture into Georgia Mart where I purchase wheat and amaranth seeds. Do I feel bad for giving money to the Georgia overlords? Yes, but also no because if Piers simply opened the shop on Wednesdays I would not have to do this. I can't wait to finish the community center so I can officially rid this town of the Georgia stench. Just like the previous two days, I spend the rest of the day planting the seeds I just bought. Wheat is ready for harvest on day 60, which is nice because I need plenty of this stuff for the community center. Bok Choi's have blessed us with their presents, which I also require for the community center, I believe. Do I? I think I do. I'll be honest, I am operating under the assumption that every crop that can be grown is needed for the community center. This isn't true of course, but it basically ensures I grow everything I need. It has become apparent that we are in dire need of a tree farm. Oak resin and pine tar need to be donated and the oak resin can also be used to produce a conglomerate of kegs in the future. I place cobblestone pathways down, connecting each tree sapling to each other. The reason for this is quite simple. The automate mod allows you to use pathways to connect machines to a chest. When these oak, pine and maple trees are fully grown, I will put tappers on them. All of the oak resin, pine tar and maple syrup will be deposited into a chest. I of course sprinkle tree fertilizer on all of these seeds to greatly speed up the entire process. I throw hops into the Durin's Rest machines as they are required to produce the item Durin wants. Day 61 begins with the collection of eggplants on the farm and tomatoes in the greenhouse. I was actually surprised when I realized I have the required amount of gold star tomatoes. I thought I needed 40 or 50 of them, but I only need 20. Sweet. I donate mussels, driftwood and periwinkles to the crab pot bundle. Seaweed, algae, bait, wheat, rainbow shells, tulips and sandstone to the bounty board bundles. Jam, juice, eggplants, bok choys, grapes and tomatoes to the crops bundles and chanterelles to the foraging bundle. I ask Robin to upgrade one of the sheds on the farm and continue the new tradition of buying kegs, preserve jars and tappers from her every time I visit her shop. There is quite a bit of time left in the day which I spend cleaning up a patch of land. 
Fiber, wood, and stone are all invaluable resources, so I am always happy to gather more of them. That and the level of dopamine in my body increases substantially every time I tidy up an area on the farm. My tea sapling obsession has returned in full force on the morning of day 62 as I make 500 of them. I will say, however, I would very much like to diversify my sources of income. I've made hundreds of thousands of gold from tea sapling so far, and while the money is nice, I don't want to rely on them as our primary moneymaker. So I have made my second executive decision of the season. Any fall seeds I make this season shall only be planted. I will not be turning them into tea saplings. That being said, the summer seeds I have are still fair game. I'm not going to turn my back on tea saplings entirely. That would be very rude of me to do after how well they have served us so far. After planting some fall seeds, I sell some items to Pierre to revive my bank account. I invest this money in 250 fall seeds. Is it just me or does I invest sound so much better than I buy? It makes it seem like I'm making an important business decision rather than just throwing my money away. Next up is a cutscene in which Jazz has gotten lost in the big forest. I help her get home, which Marnie thanks me for. If I am being entirely honest here, I did not do it out of the kindness of my heart. I did it because the big forest is my special place. I do not like the idea of anybody else being in there, frolicking around and potentially stealing all of the forage it contains. That simply cannot happen. I buy cheese presses, mayonnaise machines, oil makers and looms from Marnie and I buy four chickens for the second coop on the farm. This reminds me that I already have four chickens on the farm. They are not happy with me. That is completely understandable to say the least, I mean I have completely ignored them up to this point. My sincerest apologies to these chickens. I plant some fall seeds, then I head to Ridgeside Village where I encounter a Junimo called Kiwi. Lenny has set up a bounty board in the village. I already talked about how I tend to forget about the special orders I accept in Pelican Town, so I really hope nobody in this village is expecting me to do orders for them this year. I want to, believe me, I really do, but there is a decent chance that I'm not even going to look at this new special orders board a single time during the next four weeks. Another cutscene plays in which I am introduced to Torts, the resident turtle of Ridgeside Village. Torts snorts when they see me. That hurt my feelings quite a bit, I won't lie. I enter a building where I can pay somebody to pet my animals every morning. This is an offer I cannot refuse. This should make the whole process of keeping my animals happy a lot easier, which is delightful news. That means the size and quality of the eggs produced by your chickens will improve without me having to do any work. Later in the day, Yuma pays a visit to the farm and lets us know that Lenny would like to see us. She has a job for us. Ooh, how exciting. I spend the rest of the day fishing. With the new season comes a new batch of fish for me to catch. As was the case during summer, I'm going to dedicate a few days specifically to fishing sooner rather than later. Day 63 begins with the harvesting of dwarven barley. We should be covered on this front now. I highly doubt I'll need to plant any more for Doran's quest. Speaking of Doran, I deliver 5 of an item to Doran, which as you may have guessed, results in him asking for 5 of a new item. Oh wait, hold on, nope, actually. Durin doesn't want five of this new item, we actually need to give this item to Durr. That, that was a terrible joke. In fact, I'm not even going to consider that one a joke, that's how bad it was, I apologize. I spent some time in the mines here in Durin's rest. I'm running low on Durinium, which I need to make a new machine, and I presume a couple more new machines in the future. A curveball has been thrown our way. Up until now, Every machine required durinium, an iron bar, and an iridium bar to make. The dwarven fermenter is a different story, however. I need wood, hardwood, oak resin, an iron bar, and durinium. I was not expecting this, but this still will not be difficult to make. Also, as I predicted, I completely forgot about Clint's special order. I am neither surprised nor disappointed. The rest of the day, as well as days 64 through 67, are spent fishing. I did a few other things during this period of time, which I will point out on day 68. Speaking of which, day 68 begins with the harvesting of cranberries, fall forage, and pumpkins. 
I use my summer seeds, emphasis on summer seeds, not fall seeds, to make 300 tea saplings which I sell. It is community center time now as I donate wheat to finish off a bounty board bundle and donate moral and sea urchin to other bounty board bundles. Pickles, gold star artichokes, pumpkins, yams, fairy rose, beets and cranberries are donated to the crop bundles which results in me fully completing the fall crops bundle. I finish off the exotic foraging bundle and the fall foraging bundle. I will say however, I did something I really wish I had not done. During the period of time I spent fishing, I bought 10 oak resin from Robin. This is the oak resin I donated here. I said during summer that I did not want to buy anything I need for the community center if I can avoid it, so I'm very disappointed in myself for doing this. I'll try not to be too hard on myself though because I mean I would have gotten the oak resin from my tree farm anyway. I ask Robin to upgrade one of the coops on the farm and as always I buy kegs, preserve jars and tappers. I buy 10 pine tar just to have it, then I check on the crab pots I set up beside Penny's trailer. I did this during the fishing period so I can get access to the items I need for the crab pot bundle. I also set up crab pots at the ocean. As soon as I step foot on the beach, fishing items flow towards me. This can only mean one thing. Somebody has destroyed the chest I placed beside the crab pots here. That is not very chill. I make a few donations to the crab pot bundle. Now all I need for this one are crabs and cockles. I buy 100 bait from Willy, place a new chest beside my crab pots and fill it with the bait. Circling back to that fishing period again, I also had Robin add a silo to the farm and our trees have fully grown. This is a double whammy as they say. Our chickens will have plenty of hay to eat and we will have a steady supply of oak resin, pine tar and maple syrup really soon. I pick up the kegs beside my house, clear out the garden pots in the shed and replace them with mayonnaise machines, cheese presses and looms. Before the night is over, I place 36 chests in the first upgraded shed. This is going to be our new storage area. I also manage to place all of my kegs in the second upgraded shed. The harvest is plentiful on day 69 as I gather what I hope is enough pumpkins to provide me with more than enough gold star ones for the community center. There is no time for celebrating though as I immediately get to work on the storage shed. I spend the entire day working on it. The storage shed is almost fully complete on day 70. I already feel so much better about myself. Putting all of my items into their designated chest really does soothe my soul. For what feels like the millionth time this playthrough, I teleport to Durin's rest where I give Durin the item he asked for. I unlock the crafting recipe for the light malter. It requires an iron and iridium bar, durinium and a solar essence. I harvest more pumpkins when I return home, ensuring that we have all the gold star pumpkins we need. Doran gave me a cascade hop starter when I completed that quest earlier today, so I plant it in the greenhouse as I assume I will need cascade hops for the current quest of his I am working on. I would like to start day 71 by showing you all my storage shed. I am pretty happy with how it turned out. When I buy the wallpaper catalog in the future, I will absolutely be sure to add a lovely wallpaper and flooring to this shed just to make it look even more beautiful. I head to Marnie's where she is nowhere to be found. You know, that reminds me, I've heard so many people complain about Marnie never being in her shop, but that rarely happens to me. So I'm going to let this one slide. I make up for this unfortunate yet minor inconvenience by asking Robin to perform the final upgrade on one of her coops. I complete the final stage in the process of setting up our new tree farm by adding tappers to the trees. Then I donate gold star pumpkins to finish off the quality crops bundle. I am mesmerized as always by the sight of forage on the farm on day 72. I wanted to visit the market in Durin's Rest but unbeknownst to me, the Stardew Valley Fair takes place today. As a result, the market is locked. That is more than okay though, I am excited to go to the fair and get a star drop and a rare crow. I immediately get to work on my Grange display, doing my best to fill it up with some really nice items. I'm feeling confident as I watch Lewis look at each stall, hopeful that I will be awarded first place and receive 1000 star tokens. Sure enough, that is indeed what happens. Sensational. 
I make sure to take all of my items back, I would be very upset with myself if I left them here, and then the event ends. I am teleported back home for some reason, I have no idea how this happened. I am absolutely heartbroken as this means I have to wait until next year to get my hands on the star drop and the rare crow you can get here. No joke, I am so confused right now, I genuinely have no idea why that happened. Things go from bad to worse as I forget that Piers is closed on Wednesdays. I wanted to sell some Georgia Berry starters as I found out they sell for 1000 gold each, so day 73 is not off to a good start. Things go from worse to worser as Robin is nowhere to be found in her shop. I am in tremendous need of a pick-me-up and that pick-me-up comes in the form of a cutscene featuring the man, the myth, the used car salesman, Clint. He has a mission for us. He wants to get rid of the boulder blocking the entrance to the summit, but he needs us to bring him 20 iridium ore and 20 coal which he can use to make a bomb. I may not see eye to eye with Clint, in fact I do not like him at all, but he was there for me in my time of need so I will do my best to give him the items he needs before the end of fall. Actually no, before the end of winter. I can already tell I'm going to get sidetracked and forget about this mission he has given us, so I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. I make a good start on it though, by buying 20 coal and 10 iridium ore from Cl hold on a minute. He already has the coal and iridium ore he needs to get rid of the boulder. Why do I have to give him this stuff? I'm still going to do it, probably, but I'm not happy with you, Clint. I'm not happy at all. Jazz has a special order for us. She wants us to give salmon to the cat on the beach in East Scarp. I obtained plenty of salmon during my fishing adventure, so I will happily accept this one. Except, it's not that simple. You see, I can't just give the salmon to the cat. I need to catch five new salmon. This revelation has basically confirmed that I will not be doing this special order. Not because I'm too lazy to catch salmon, no, I'm just going to forget about this one like how I did with Clint's special order. I take the geode crusher I received for completing a bundle in the community center, place it beside a chest, and put my geodes and coal into the chest. This should give us plenty of gems and minerals which we can donate to the museum. I make my way to East Scarp where I enter the cave that can be found on the beach. I came here during summer, but I did not have my pickaxe on me so I couldn't explore it as much as I wanted to. That is not the case here. I make my way through the cave where I discover a locked door and the entrance to the cave Lexi lives in. And that is pretty much it. I'm not disappointed though, I like the whole aesthetic of this cave. I decide to take a leisurely nighttime stroll through the town, taking in all of the sights and sounds of the area, my heart and soul feeling truly at peace. I can confirm the Geode Crusher is working well on day 74, I am very excited to see the goods we obtain from it in the future. I collect a good few eggs for my coops and I am delighted to see we are already obtaining large eggs. We need gold star large eggs for the community center, so it was a massive relief seeing these show up. I enter Marnie's shop, but she is not behind the counter. I do a bit of shoplifting and, shall we say, acquire a few eggs as payment for the continued inconvenience she is causing me. I also steal Mir Lewis's purple shorts. Look, all I wanted was to get some rabbits and ducks, I don't think that's too much to ask for. I place all of my eggs into the mayonnaise machines, but I make sure to hold on to the gold star large egg. Robin is back in her shop after yesterday's kerfuffle, so I ask her to build a barn for us. Then it's off to Ridgeside Village where Lenny has a job for us. She needs our help to repair the minecart system here. You know what? Lenny seems like a genuinely good person and she's doing a much better job at helping people in Ridgeside Village then Lewis is at helping people in Pelican Town, so I figure the least I can do is assist her in repairing the minecarts. She wants 300 wood, 10 iron bars, and 5 gold bars, which isn't too bad at all. I enter the hotel in the village where I meet the piano player Richard told us about on the first day of fall. Neat. Up next we have a cutscene involving Lorenzo, Kiara and Shanice. I hope I'm pronouncing all of those names correctly, but as always, I'm probably not. Shanice says she isn't feeling well, which makes Lorenzo worried. 
I'm assuming Lorenzo is Shanice's husband. Kiara says Shanice is showing signs of being pregnant. Shanice seems confused at first, then agrees with Kiara. They ask me to back them up. Quite frankly, I am tremendously confused as to what is going on, I do not know what they're talking about, and I could not even tell that they were trying to make a joke. I decide to support them anyway, and they eventually reveal that the whole thing was, in fact, a joke. Now that I actually understand it, I think it's pretty funny. I take a look at the items Lorenzo is selling. It's basically the same items Pierre sells, just without any of the seeds. The rest of the day is spent chopping down trees. I have already used thousands and thousands of wood during this playthrough, and I have no doubt I will need so much more before all is said and done. Marnie is finally at the counter in her shop on day 75. I have waited so long for this moment. I buy four autograbbers, which sets me back by 100,000 gold. I also buy four ducks and four rabbits, then I take the autograbbers and place one in each coop. I place a chest beside the autograbbers, so there will be plenty of space for all of the eggs, wool, etc. True to my word, I embark on a voyage to Ridgeside Village where I deposit the iron and gold bars and the wood Lenny asked me to get in order to repair the minecart. From there I head north of the village where I meet a mysterious man named Geo, I think. Look, you all know how much I struggle with pronouncing names in this game. There's no way I'm pronouncing this one correctly. I've accepted that. He is aware that we are the grandchild of our grandfather. He is surprised we can see the true shape of his ears. I mean, we've got that Junimo magic flowing through our body, of course we can see his real ears. He leaves without saying much else. It turns out he did not go far because I see him standing beside Kiwi. I go to the right side of this area where I find a house. In this house is a note that reads, Keep an eye on the old man's farm. Await further instructions. Interesting, very interesting indeed. I walk to the north of this little area where another cutscene plays. I meet Geo once again. I'm going to be completely honest here. I do not like his vibes. It's like, ooh, look at me, I have cool ears, and I'm friends with a magic Junimo, and I'm wearing a sweet outfit, aren't I just great? It may be time for Clint to step aside, I believe I may have found my new nemesis. The rest of the day is spent wandering around this big forest. There is an abundance of forage to be found here, which I absolutely love. There are also quite a few enemies here, which I do not mind at all. I have no doubt that my sword can make quick work of them. One thing I am not happy about, however, is that one of these monsters can hit me with the nauseated debuff. This means I can't eat or drink anything for two minutes. This puts me in a precarious position as I fight off waves and waves of monsters, unable to eat anything should I need to restore my health. The monsters here drop an item called Spiritual Essence. Cool. The big long serpent-like monster also drops Mountain Mist Bloom when I defeat it. Realistically, I could have left the area at any point, but I wanted to test myself and see if I could last until 2am. And that is what I did. I receive a letter from Lenny on day 76. She has invited us to a festival in the village. Wonderful, I'm excited to see what this is all about. I enter Ridgeside Village, walk around for a few seconds, and once again, the festival ends and I am teleported back home. At this point, I became convinced that one of the mods I am using has a feature that lets you skip festivals by pressing a certain key. I take a look and I think I was correct. The Event Repeater mod has an emergency skip function. So I reckon I accidentally hit those keys while I was at today's festival and the Stardew Valley Fair which caused them to end. I feel very silly. On day 77, I am proud to announce I have 7 gold star mayonnaise. Only 23 more and I will have enough for the community center. The egg situation is also looking bright. Our chickens are producing a ton of them each day. I'm feeling less anxious about the animal bundle in the community center now. I harvest cascade hops in the greenhouse. Then I remember that I already bought cascade hop starters from Balor and grew them so I retrieved them from a chest. I throw them into my machines and they get to work. Durin wants Dwarven Ale. We are currently making bitter Dwarven Red Ale Wart. That's a mouthful. Wow, okay. Uh, which can be turned into Dwarven Red Ale. 
I'm going to be completely transparent here. I'm not proud of what I did next. I was torn between two trains of thought. Number one. What if Dwarven Red Ale is not the same as Dwarven Ale and Doran won't accept it? And number two. I'm making Dwarven Ale right now. I've basically done all of the steps involved in this quest. Why don't I just make this a little bit easier for myself? I head to the mines in Durin's Rest where I gather as much Durinium as I possibly can. I use this Durinium to make Durbloons and I spend these Durbloons on two Dwarven Ale. I return to the mines to collect more Durinium. I'm sure you can figure out what my plan is. I'm not going to wait for the Red Dwarven Ale to be ready, bring it to Durin and hope he accepts it. I'm going to be a bit cheeky and just buy the Dwarven Ale I need. Do I regret doing this? Honestly, yeah, yeah, I do. This is similar to me buying 10 Oak Resin and donating them to the community center. I feel bad for doing this, but I will make up for it. I will not do this again for the next item Durin wants. I sell 124 Georgia Berry starters to Pierre on day 78. Like I mentioned earlier, these are worth 1,000 gold each, so this earned us a delicious 124,000 gold. I toss my coffee beans into the keg shed, then I visit Ridgeside Village where the minecart system has been restored. That is fantastic news, and on top of that, everybody was very grateful that I helped them out. It's nice to be appreciated, so that was a very heartwarming cutscene. I head to the north where I enter the house here for the second time. A cutscene plays where Geo introduces me to somebody named Daya. I do not know how to pronounce half of the names I've seen in this playthrough so far, and that is no different here. It might be Daya, or it might be Daya. I might be right, I might be wrong, I do not know. Anyway, both of these adventurers have a list of items that we need to collect from the big forest just north of here. I need to gather 25 mountain mist blooms and donate one each of the following items. Silver fish bones, hollowed bear, entombed ring, shell bracelet, lover's sorrow, yellow wood sculpture, inked fossil, night black diamond, and a golden skull coral. This won't be easy, it might even be difficult, but I shall persevere. I said that I want to make progress on a storyline outside of the Durin's Rest one. This is the beginning of that mission. If I don't find all of these items by the end of this season, then I'm giving up on this playthrough. I cannot, will not, and must not fail to deliver these items. I enter the big forest where I spend the rest of the day battling monsters and searching for the items I need. One of these monsters drops a golden skull coral and an entombed ring. I also donated the inked fossil while I was in the house as I picked that up the first time I came here. That is three of the nine items taken care of already. I am curious about the mountain mist bloom though. It said to gather 25 of them which makes me think they're a forage item and I can find them in this area. On top of getting them by defeating the long serpent monster of course. I'm not seeing any of them on the ground here right now so maybe they only show up during a certain season or it depends on the weather or the time or something like that. At 11pm I find a very interesting item on the ground. A golden pumpkin. I need this for the community center. This is a very nice find. Day 79 begins in the mines in Durin's Rest. I want to buy the three dwarven ale I need which means I must get my hands on some more durinium. I took all of my durbloons with me and after leaving the mines I turn my durinium into even more durbloons. I buy the three ale I need and give it to Durin for which I receive a noble hop starter, the crafting recipe for the dwarven dark malter and a quest to bring five dwarven porter to Durin. I need iron bars, iridium bars, durinium and void essence to make this machine. I promise you, this machine will be made. It's back to the mines so I can get even more durinium. I only need 5 to make 5 of that new machine, but I figure it's better to get at least 10 of them just to be on the safe side. I make the new machine on day 80. I place a dwarven barley and piece of coal into it to get things started. I've decided to only have one machine beside the chest here. I don't want to run the risk of making the wrong item by having every machine working at the same time. The wizard has a special order for us. He would like us to find a prismatic slime, defeat it, 
grab the prismatic jelly it drops and bring it to him. I accept this special order, but unlike the previous two orders, I'm actually going to do this one. I'm tired of letting these villagers down. If I can't remember their birthdays, then the least I can do is complete some orders for them. Next up is museum donation time. I have ignored the museum for quite some time now, so to make up for that, I have brought every gem, mineral and artifact I have with me. All of these items are donated. I collect the Dwarvish Translation Guide and two rare crows from the rewards available to me, which allows me to talk to the dwarf in the mines for the first time. He is selling oil of garlic and life elixirs. I need both of these for the community center, so I do not buy them. I do not need to. I can make them myself. I will remain strong and resist the temptation to do things the easy way. Once again, I return to the forest in Ridgeside Village. I use a rain totem before I go to sleep. I want to see what effect the rain has on the forest and the items that can spawn there. Gunther pays us a visit on the morning of day 81. He thanks us for donating so many items to the museum and he lets us know that we will be receiving a large sum of money in the mail. I check my mail and the first thing I see is a letter from Rosa. The East Scarp Inn will be holding a Halloween party on Spirits Eve starting at 1pm. I will make sure to check that out in two days time. I grab my coffees from the keg shed, then I watch a cutscene where Marilyn enters the sewers. I just realized I did not receive the key to the sewers from Gunther this morning. I forgot that Marilyn gives you the key to the sewers when you reach 5 hearts of friendship with him. I ask Robin to upgrade the barn on the farm, then I deliver the 4 items I found in the forest last night. Mountain mist blooms have shown up in the forest, which confirms my theory that rain makes them and potentially other items appear. And by theory, I mean I looked at the wiki for Ridgeside Village and found out that rain makes mountain mist blooms spawn. I just wanted to be honest about that. I pick up the yellow wood sculpture outside the tent on the left side of the area, grab the shell bracelet in the north, and I meet a ghost girl in the right side of the forest. I talk to her and I obtain the hollowed bear. All I need now is the night black diamond. I spend the remainder of the night gallivanting around the forest, hoping to find this diamond but I have no luck with it unfortunately. But that is okay. Today was a very successful day regardless. Gunther sends us 40,000 gold on day 82. Thank you Gunther. I also realized I need 5 of the item Durin once, so I place another 4 of the same machine down beside the chest. This is going to be a long process. I need to take the Dwarven Barley Mash this machine will make, swap the machine for a different machine, make another item, swap the machines again, rinse and repeat until I end up with 5 Dwarven Porter. I ask Marnie to add 4 cows to the barn and buy 2 Iridium Bands from Marlin. Then, to the surprise of everybody I'm sure, I head to the mines to work on the wizard special order. I need to find a prismatic slime. My tactic for this is simple. I use the elevator to get to floor 5 and I search for the prismatic slime. If it is not here, I return to the top of the mines. Then I use the elevator to go back to floor 5. Rinse and repeat until the slime shows up and it actually shows up really soon after I start this process. This is without a doubt the quickest I have ever obtained the prismatic jelly. I enter the wizard's house where I become a bit nosy I'll admit and I start reading a book on one of the wizard's bookshelves. The wizard catches me reading this book and he is a bit miffed that I've decided to do this but he says he'll teach us plenty of magic in the future. I present the prismatic jelly to the wizard completing his special order. I spend the rest of the day searching for the diamond in the forest. Long story short, I was not able to find it. The wizard sends us a letter on day 83. He lets us know that the shadow people are holding their own celebration for Spirits Eve in the sewer. Unfortunately, I do not have the key to the sewer so I cannot attend this celebration. This festival is added by the Festival of the Mundane mod. I really wish I remembered that we get the key to the sewers by getting Marlin to 5 hearts. And not from Gunther after donating 60 items to the museum. That makes me sad. I head to the inn in East Scarp as a Spirits Eve party is being held here. 
it's not really a festival or an event. It's kind of just a group of villagers hanging out inside here, but it's still a really nice touch. I'm excited to see if a similar party will be held for the Winter Star Festival. The inn itself has been very nicely decorated for this party too. I really like this. I leave the party and head to Robin's where I buy kegs and preserve jars. I stopped mentioning me buying these items during the last week or so, but you will see why I mentioned buying these items today pretty soon. I move on to the next stage of the Durin's Rest items machine production thingy. I don't know how to describe this process anymore. In fact, I won't mention this again until I have the Dwarven Porter. I collect a few mushrooms that have shown up on the farm, collect some that have been deposited in the chest beside our tappers, and collect them from the chest in the mushroom cave. I make 20 life elixirs and 10 farm warp totems as I need them for the community center. I throw hops into the kegs to make the pale ale I need and attend the Spirit's Eve festival. I don't spend long here at all though, I just buy a rare crow and the jack-o'-lantern crafting recipe. I head into the forest in Ridgeside Village at 1am. Out of curiosity, I take a screenshot of the map and the diamond has actually appeared. The problem is, here is where the diamond is located. It's at the very top of the map. I probably don't have enough time to grab it, but I guess we'll never know if I would have been able to get it because my game crashed at this point. So I had to repeat everything I did today all over again. The only things I did not do are buy kegs and preserve jars from Robin and go into the forest at the end of the day. I'm taking all of my faith and putting it into the hope that I will be able to find the diamond tomorrow. Day 84, the final day of fall. Mayor Lewis pays us a visit and tells us that the governor is sending his wife and son to live in East Scarp for winter. Lewis is relying on us to make them feel welcome. The replies to this are a mix of funny and also very accurate. My personal favorite is, isn't that your job? That being said, I'm busy enough and what's in it for me are also very valid responses too in my opinion. I decide to be nice and say, of course I will. I collect eggs and wool from my coop and ask Marnie to add four goats to the barn. I toss some eggs into the mayonnaise machines, add hardwood to the list of items I will be purchasing from Robin every time I visit her, and I ask her to build a second barn for us. I collect crabs and cockles from the crab pots at the beach. I only get seven crabs, but luckily I have another nine crabs in a chest in the storage shed. I add an auto grabber and a chest to the barn and finish off the crab pot bundle by donating the crabs and cockles. I also finish off one of the bounty board bundles by donating life elixirs, farm warp totems, and a golden pumpkin. Finally, to finish off the day, I head into the forest to search for the diamond. I said earlier that if I do not find all 9 items by the end of fall, then I'm ending the playthrough. This is the moment of truth. Have these 84 days all been for nothing? Is this the end of the series? I was sweating and shaking at this point, my left leg began to bounce up and down nervously. But then, just after midnight, I found it. I found the diamond. The ninth and final item has been found. This playthrough will continue. I am incredibly relieved. I genuinely did start to believe that I wasn't going to find the diamond, so I'm really, really happy right now. And I think that is a good place to end the season. Again, I feel like we were very productive, especially in terms of the community center this season. I think at this point, the main question I have is will we be able to fully complete the community center before the end of winter? We shall find out very soon.